Well, greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows and every tongue confesses, because He is the Lord Jesus. He is Lord and He is above it all. And in Him, we live, we move, and we have our being. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm testing out a little bit of new equipment. Um, let's see how this one sounds. It's a new mic. Um, it is called, for those of you guys out there that, <clears throat> that are looking at equipment and gear, this was recommended to me. It's not too expensive, but it's called a purple panda. <clears throat> so it's a purple panda. And um, so we'll see how it sounds. If you, can, you can take a look and you can see if this is better worse or somewhere in between as far as the sound audio goes because I've been continuously looking for solutions because I've been changing the interface, changing the way that sometimes we do Faith Mix just because there is some limitations on uh, time <laughs> and trying to streamline things and trying to make sure that, that um, certain things can happen um, a little bit more efficiently. And, um, you know, it's kind of also been just a process over a number of years, <clears throat> you know, as far as uh, the people that support on this and the people that are involved and engaged on this. You know, everybody has um, done this just over the years as a service, you know, to the body of Christ, something that we can do to help each other out there, um, to encourage each other on the journey and on the way. And, um, <clears throat> you know, and that, that does have um, its, its challenges. The reward is that we know that whatever it is that God gives us, we just put it out there and we let it be what it is. But, um, you know, at the same time, too, we're human. <laughs> you know, we, we, um, you know, you'd think that, that just doing something as a service to others uh, without, you know, putting people, you know, without putting any expectation or anything like that, that there would just be, um, I don't know, there'd just be something that there'd be a, I guess the decent side of humanity would, would assume that there, if nothing else, that there'd just be some, that there'd be respect or there'd be um, appreciation. You know, if, if you guys, for those of you that are kind of new to this and you're starting out, um, <laughs> no, that's not it. If you're... <clears throat> If you are on track, and if you're on target, um, a lot of times people won't say much. They'll just kind of observe and watch, and, oh, okay, no, they were right about that. Oh, okay, they were right about that. But they won't tell you, they'll just watch. And then, um, and if, if you're on track too, there's also going to be a lot of um, people that come from all around the place to try to diminish to try to discourage, to try to knock you down, to try to uh, besmirch your character, is our two dollar word for the day, besmirch, to, um, <clears throat> to just, just to go after <clears throat> you for who you are and what you do, and to question your, your reasons, your motives, your intentions, um, your character, all of this is part and parcel of the course. If you read um, Jesus' own life and you in the scriptures and you read the experiences of those that followed Christ, that's pretty normal, you know. And <clears throat> so, you know, you, you can't take any of that stuff too personal. You just have to do the thing that God gives you to do and let that be it. So, in the process of doing what God has for you to do, um, you know, it can, be, it can be a bit discouraging at times because of the other things that we end up facing in the process. Um, you know, <laughs> you, you would think that um, if God shows you something and, um, you know, and, and it's right, it's been seen to be right or it's been seen to be accurate, that, um, okay, you know, there's... But, no, we were just... I mean, we, we, had, uh, we talked about it on that recent 20 on 20, a um, couple ones back <clears throat> with the political crisis in Sri Lanka, you know, we prayed, asked God what the situation was, what he, what was going on. God gave us a very specific word that at the time that we discussed it and at the time we even posted it, um, it was very unlikely um, 
for that to be <clears throat> what would actually end up happening. But it happened. Um, God put a stop to certain things. God, um, um, you know, just the circumstances and situations unfolded such that things were dealt with according to the word and the instruction of God. And we prayed where and when God had us to pray. And that was it. Now, is there repentance on the side of the worlders when they realize that they're off? Um, <clears throat> is there the fear of God, seeing that He's above it all and that He intervenes, intervenes in, the, in the affairs of man? It doesn't matter how many millions of dollars they have and that they throw at things that, and all the manipulation and all the control and all the rest of that, that still, when God decides to move on something, that that's it? Um, is there any acknowledgement of that? No. No, no, no. In fact, you know, the scriptures talk about in the book of Revelation when, when men see all these things happening and all the, just, just the things that take place in a very tumultuous time, that they don't repent. In fact, they rail against God all the more. So, that is... Um, part of, of the situation. <clears throat> that is part of what it is that we're facing in this time. And you've got to recognize that that's um, part of the equation that we're all going to face in our time here. So the need that you have in this time is to be faithful, to do the thing that God has for you to do, to remain consistent, and, you know, don't be discouraged. And, and I know that's, and I say that as one that's been discouraged a lot um, in recent times. <clears throat> don't be discouraged because he that began the good work in you is carrying it on to completion. All of us are here for just a window and a season and a transitional period. And when that season and that window of time is done, you and I, we carry on. So this, this life is not really that long and um, you know it's I mean yeah I, I mean God only knows how much time I've got left around here I mean if, if it's a long time in the in the process of time in the world uh, then sure but if it's if it's short that's fine too because to live is Christ and to die is gain to stay on track with him is the purpose to fulfill the plan and the destiny that God has for you is your objective. And if you're doing that, if you're walking with Him, great. Praise God and thank Him for it. Thank God that He woke you up. Thank God that He's given you direction. Thank God that He has a plan and purpose for your life. Um, <clears throat> you know, yeah, I, I, I think it's been, been a bit of a quiet time, I think, for me recently, of just not not publishing and not posting. I think, you know, I think on a on a human level, that last round of political upheaval and crisis and everything, it took it took something out of me um, on a natural level, and also just even to the the discouragement that's there, you know, after that whole experience, in just the frivolous way that people deal with the things of God. You know, I, I think, <clears throat> I think in times past, there was a reverence for when people would see the hand of God and the moving of God. There was a reverence for that. There was a um, uh, a fear of God. You know, and in Nebuchadnezzar's time, when he saw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, walking in the fire, unhurt by the flames with, you know, with the angel of God there among them. You know, and, and after that entire thing, he, you know, he was, I mean, he was taken aback. You know, he recognized, he made a public decree after that whole experience that if anybody spoke against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that they're their home would be turned into a dunghill and they would, uh, 
he thought they'd all be killed. I mean, it was, it was he 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 made some some uh, some changes based on a spiritual experience, based on seeing the hand of God move. You know, there were others that um, fought and railed against God, like Pharaoh in Egypt, but even with that one, they still recognize God's hand. And today, it's just to see that people have been so detached and so um, separated and so inundated and so their minds have been so, so dulled that even when God does incredible works and incredible miracles, they just don't seem to even register. So I, I think that's that's something that is uh, you know, noticing more and more, you know, where the things that are important are not seen as being important, and things that, that are trivial, things that really don't matter, are given in preeminence in the world. So it's it's a you know that kind of thing. It's a backward world. You know, this is a backward spot that we've kind of arrived in. Um, you know, I've been noticing more and more of the uh, Mandela effects, <laughs> which are just giving us more of an understanding that this is a fluid reality. And um, for those of you that that um, that uh, have been looking at some of those occasionally, just to just to see. Uh, you know, the Statue of Liberty changing, and there's this, uh, you know, historical attack now in the history books um, that affected the Statue of Liberty, and, um, you know, and that, that's part of the reason for the change in the design. Uh, you know, a celebrity-related one that Ed McMahon never worked for a publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes. <laughs> and if you grew up watching the those seeing those oversized checks coming to people's doors with balloons and everybody screaming because they saw Ed McMahon, you remember those commercials? Those don't exist now. Um, which, you know, all of these things are, are, okay, well, what is this, you know? The words on the scriptures have changed. The paradigm is shifting. What is all of this? Well... One thing, it's not what it was before. It's not where you were before. So where are we? Where are we now? What is, what is the nature and the context of this place? And where we are right now, that could shift again. That could shift very, very quickly. Um, you know, I think <clears throat> you know, one of the things that God was showing me uh, sometime back was the Stephen Keys to accessing um, different paradigms, uh, you know, shifting our position in spirit. Because you know, we're seated in heavenly places. There's another spot. You know, we're, we're already, we're there right now. So you exist in another state of being right now. But yet this is your primary consciousness. So if you can be existing simultaneously... You know, if you can be seated in heavenly places and also have a primary consciousness here, well, where else? Ah, so what is the, what's the key to go in and out and find pasture? What is the key to shifting your primary consciousness of where you are, you as a spirit being? Um, what does that look like? What's possible? You know, when you, when you receive Christ Jesus as your Savior, when you acknowledge um, the revelation of who God is, of who Jesus Christ is, and Christ in you, the hope of glory, well, that's a key. That's one that takes you from the power of Satan unto God, <clears throat> from darkness to light, as Paul wrote about in Acts 26. So, well, actually, Luke was the one that wrote that down, but, or well, did the, re the recording of it, but... Um, but it's the words of Paul, you know, God took him from, from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. There's a key right there. That, that revelation of Christ in you, the hope of glory, transitions you from one state of being into another. If that revelation didn't take place in your heart, you would continue down 
a particular track. You continue down a particular consciousness. You continue down and, and a particular life experience. And all of a sudden, the track changed. Because a key was given, and the door was open, and you walked through it. So, now Jesus said, the keys I give to you. There's, there's more. I mean, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone, <clears throat> is the foundation, is the, the stone that the real builders rejected, but he is the capstone, he is the cornerstone. So, okay, so now, but what other stones are built upon that rock? What other stones are used to build that house? What, what other things are there? What other treasures are in that house? What other uh, things are available to you? What else is part of your experience? God, I wish we were taught in church. I wish we were taught in church. Who we are, why we're here, the purpose, the reason, the experience. Wouldn't that have been amazing? Wouldn't that have been amazing? So that when you began um, moving forward, you would have just gone straight into the things of God and not wasted your time with all of this um, church church needs and all of the games that people play. Dressing it up in something spiritual to give it legitimacy when it's been rejected by God as having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And no, I refuse to be um, anybody's cult leader. (laughs) And I refuse to gather people into some place to now come together and to um, do whatever it is that I tell them to do while I reveal these deep spiritual truths. How many times do we have this inside of us just to want to have somebody stand between us and God. What's the deal? What is the deal inside of human beings that they want to keep putting themselves under the curse of the law? The curse of the law was this, that you needed a man to get to God. You needed somebody to stand between you and God to mediate. That was the all in the Old Covenant. And there was no access. And Jesus Christ came and created the access, created the way through his body, through his spilt blood on the cross. That way is made. And now we have direct access to the living God. And for some reason, people just continue to want a man. They continue to want a person to stand between them and God. Yeah, that that could very well be um, a reason that God keeps me from not doing that, from not putting myself in those positions, because it's too easy. It's too easy and people are too quickly drawn. And they stop looking to God to lead them and to guide them and to teach them. And they keep, they want to look, they want so badly to look to a man, to tell them what God said. Moses, you go, you talk to God, And then you come back and tell us what he said. And then when Moses comes back and tells them what God said, well, who do you think you are, Moses? (laughs) Oh, boy, it's a double-edged sword. You know, it's a double-edged sword. But what happens when one day those voices aren't there anymore? What happens when one day, when people have, they refuse to to, to talk to God themselves, they refuse to connect with him themselves, They refused to to move in the thing that God offered them in Christ Jesus. They refuse it. And then they tell others, you go talk to God, come back. And they refuse to listen to the Word of God or the prophets of God. What's left? They're left unto themselves to carry on in the world. And then when the time of crisis comes... They don't know. They don't know, and they won't know, because they're cut off. Now, 
No. In the process of where we are right now, in the process of all of what's taking place right now, we have to continue on the path and on the journey and on the direction that God gave us. Keep your eyes on Christ. Ride the wave. Be aware but not distracted. You know, I, we've, oh my gosh, from this time that we started um, that portion of the instructions God gave us, my gosh, how many shifts and changes have happened to what we consider the primary consciousness of our life and our experience and the world. My gosh. And it's not done at all. So we're in it. We're, we're on it. You're on the wave. So ride that wave. Keep your eyes on Christ. And, yeah, you know, don't get discouraged when certain things come up, twists and turns, because those are going to be part of it, but also you got to recognize that God is, is he's in control. He will, he will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's going to always be with you. And, you know, there's... If they don't receive your word, that's okay. They didn't receive Christ's either, in a lot of cases. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. But the word is preached. The truth is spoken. The option is given. Light is, is proclaimed and there is no excuse. So we do our part. Brothers and sisters, do your part. Do your part as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do your part as a worthy hire, doing what it is that, that they've been commissioned to do, knowing that God, He will be the one to reward you. He will be the one to bless you. He will be the one to compensate you for all that you've gone through on behalf of Him and His name and His kingdom. You know, God... He, now, the world may cheat you. The people in the world may do all manner of evil against you. But God will never, never let his people down. And ultimately, you're in his hands. So, you know, and we are persuaded that he be that began that good work in us is going to carry it on to completion. You know, if we go up, if we go down, that's secondary. The key is to be on, in track with God. You don't want to go up if God doesn't want you to go up. And nor do you want to go down if God doesn't want you to go down. Or sideways. Or within. Or without. Whatever it may be. You know, we're not limited by direction. We're, we're, we're called to be. Let everything else be an extension of what God, God directs you in that moment. So right now, <clears throat> remain in I am. Let his words remain in you. In Christ Jesus, we live and move and have our being. And in Christ, we carry on and complete the purposes that God has for us. Consider the fact that you've been given everything to be and to do as God would have and see fit. And so in the process of you being given all things, to him who has been given much, much will be required. You've been blessed. You've been blessed to have the very counsel of heaven given to you. The spirit of truth that leads and guides you into all truth is with you. So walk in that truth. and Walk in what God reveals unto you. And live it out. Know that God is in control and that He has you. Don't worry. Don't worry about anything. Because all is, is right. And um, it's right because He knows what He's doing. And in all of this, if you do your part and you pray and you follow the leading of God in the Holy Spirit, it's going to be good. All right. We love you guys. God bless you. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. Say hi. 
I'd always love to hear from you guys. And uh, yeah, we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll put things out when, when and where God gives us something. So uh, yeah, just be encouraged today. Know that God's in control. And um, pray, pray for one another, pray for us, and pray for me. God bless you guys. In Jesus' name, pray for you. Bless your people. Bless the listeners. Bless those that walk with you. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name. God bless you guys. All right. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. Love, love to hear from you. Talk to you later. All right.